Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. If you're new to my channel, my name is Helen and today we're going to be using some really nice blues and purples and autumn colours to paint a very simple woodland landscape. I've used an 8x10 inch canvas. I've also put information in the description about the materials, colours and paints that I've used and we'll also discuss them as we're going through the painting. The first thing that I'm going to do is I have a large filled up brush. I'm just going to paint one area in the top right hand corner white and then I'm going to come in with my pale blue violet and a little white as well. I have both on the brush and we're just going to work those in around that lighter area. I'm using sort of a crisscross motion with my brush, gently blending it all together, leaving the centre slightly lighter than the outside. Just make it as soft and gentle as you can using that crisscross motion and we'll slowly start building up the area around that lighter spot in the corner. I'm being quite light with my brush strokes, I'm not being too heavy with them, just gently blending it in as we go. And then after I finish that we're going to come in with some ultramarine and also a little bit of pale blue violet again and we'll make it a little bit darker as we're moving outwards. I'm just doing that crisscross motion again. It doesn't matter if it isn't blended completely. If you've got a few areas that are lighter and darker, that's absolutely fine. This area is probably a little bit on the dark side. So I think what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of white over the top and then that will lighten it right back up again. And because the paint's still wet, we can keep blending it until we get the colour and value that we need. Now I'm going to add a little bit of purple as well and some more ultramarine to make it a little bit darker. I'm not really mixing them too much. I'm keeping them on the, on the brush as individual colours and then just blending them slightly on the canvas. And we can always add a little bit more white to any areas that we need to until we get something that we think looks about right. The main thing is just to keep it nice and soft. The next thing I'm going to do is mark off where the ground is going to be um, at the front and in the distance. So again, I'm using my purple and ultramarine and we'll just draw that line in and then blend it up a little more. And I think we'll keep this area nice and white, a little bit lighter, just to make it look as if the light is shining through from behind. Then we're going to take our white. I still have my dirty brush, so I'm just adding more white to the brush and I'm going to gradually blend it outwards so it gets lighter as we get to the left hand side of the canvas. Just adding a little bit more white each time until it's really light on the left hand side. And again, I'm using my large filbert brush just to soften that up and blend it gently. But it's quite nice if it's got that mottled effect and it's got certain colours in certain areas. I think that looks quite good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm coming in with sap green. I've added a little bit of ultramarine on the brush as well uh, for the distant part of the ground. And we'll mark out our straight line again. I'm just painting it in by eye, but if you did want to use some masking tape, you could wait until the blue's dried in the background, put your masking tape on to get a straight line. But I'm just going to move the brush along and get roughly the line in the distance that I'm looking for. 
so we'll make it sort of greeny blue on the right hand side and I'm keeping my brush strokes nice and horizontal I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna some red some yellow and we'll add that to the left hand side of the canvas and it's just sweeping it along keeping the brush strokes nice and horizontal and blending the colors together And now I'm coming in with my cadmium yellow deep on the very left hand side because this is where the sun will be coming in from the left and again I'm just sweeping that across the canvas and blending those colours together. Play around with the colours, use whatever colours you like. I'm going to make it mostly green on the right with lighter colours on the left and my really nice burnt sienna in the middle. But we can add some highlights and shadows later. So at this point, I'm really just wanting to block in the ground. I think I'm also going to make the bottom left hand corner quite dark as well because that will be in shadow in the foreground. If you don't have a large filbert brush, a flat brush would work just as well. Just blend it all together, keep the brush strokes nice and horizontal and maybe put a little bit of light. I'm putting some white in the very left hand corner just to make it a little bit lighter on that side. And then blending it all together. Now I have a really coarse sort of firm bristled round brush. I'm going to be using this to add in the indication of some trees and shadows in the, different, in the distance. I've used a little bit of sap green, some ultramarine. Um, I've also added a little bit of white to the first paint that I'm using because I want that to be quite faint in the distance. Just mix the colours till you get something that you're happy with and then all we're doing is dabbing the brush onto the canvas just to give a little bit of an effect of trees and make it look a little bit like blurred trees in the distance. Just dabbing it on, building it up at either side of that lighter area that we kept earlier. And just slowly, slowly building it up. a little bit down here too around the section at the bottom the next
next thing I'm going to do is make it slightly darker by adding more sap green and more ultramarine. And then we'll come back in again and we'll add some darker ones a little bit closer to us. So that will give the impression that the fainter ones are more in the distance and the darker ones are a little bit closer. And it's the same technique, we're just dabbing it on using the shape of the brush and the coarse bristles to give that leaf and foliage effect. You could always use a fan brush as well if you'd prefer. It will give a slightly similar effect to this. doesn't look too bad. If you're unsure where to put them, always sort of stand back from the canvas for a little while, have a look, and then come back and add a few more where you think will look good. Now I'm coming in with a medium round brush. Mine is a size 8, but you could use any sort of medium round brush. I'm making it slightly darker with by adding more sap green, and then we can come in and start adding our tree trunks. Add a little bit of water to the paint too if you need to. And we'll just sweep that up with our rain brush. You can add a little bit of white to it as well just to make it a little bit fainter if you need to. And then slowly build up the tree trunk. And now I'm going to make it slightly more blue and paler as well by adding more white and we can add some even smaller tree trunks in the distance. There's not much detail in these at all, it really just is a few lines, an indication of tree trunks here and there. And you can put them wherever you feel looks best. Just sweeping them up. Keep adding your blues and greens until you get a colour that you like. If it's too dark, just add a little more white. we can put another one here maybe just a few small faint ones I'm not going to put too many because I still want to see that really nice purple and blue in the distance <laughs> 
And if you make some slightly smaller and some just a little bit bigger, it'll help create that feeling of distance too. Now I'm going to add more brown, more of my burnt sienna. And we can start adding another slightly larger tree trunk a little bit closer to us. So because it's a little darker and it has a little bit more um, stronger colour, it'll look like it's closer to us than the ones we've done in the distance. And we'll just sweep that up too with our medium rain brush. What you can probably do is slightly um, increase it, the size of it, make it bigger until you're happy with how it looks. I think it needs to be a little bit bigger than this, so we'll just keep building it up. Just bring it down past that horizon line so it sits nicely on the ground. And at this stage we're just blocking in our tree so we're certainly going to add more details later on. Add in some branches and we'll slowly start getting the shape of our trees. So the branches are going to be thicker and bigger when they join the tree trunk and then as you're pulling away just slowly gently lift your brush off the canvas a little so you're using just the tip and point of the brush to make them thinner as they get further up. And we'll add a few branches on this tree too. There we go. Now I'm going to take my burnt sienna. I've got my cadmium yellow deep and also you can either use cadmium red or scarlet red. I have scarlet red today. And then we can start adding a few trees in the distance. That's a little bit too bright, so I'll use some of my darker colour here just to darken it a little. We don't want the colours to be too strong because they are going to be in the distance and in the shadow. And then just using the same medium rain brush, we can add a few trees and shrubs just in the distance. If you need to darken it a little, add some sap green and a little ultramarine.
there we go I'll just put a few leaves on this part so you can see them with the lighter area behind almost a little silhouette just to add a little more interest I'm going to put another one here. And that will probably do for now. I've made it a little bit darker again by adding some more ultramarine. And then we can start adding a few leaves and a little bit of detail on the tree that's closer to us. Just using my medium rain brush again and adding in a few of those leaf shapes. I'm using the darker colour first just so I can get the shapes right and a bit of a silhouette of leaves. I'm really just using the tip of the brush and again it's a little bit of a crisscross motion but just using the, the brush shape to get the shape of the leaves. It doesn't have to be perfect, some can be blocked together, some can be just a few individual leaves. Just keep building it up until you're happy with it. and then we can do the same on this other tree and a little bit on the other side I've added a little more burnt sienna to this side to warm it up a little and it is slightly blue in that top right hand corner Just dabbing it on and slowly building it up. I think we'll add another little shrub and bush in the background on this side too. in a really sort of pale yellowy brown colour, sort of a golden yellow and we can start adding some highlights and some areas where the sun is going to hit the tree as it comes through the leaves. So it's almost dappled light as it's coming downwards and it'll be on the left hand side of the tree.
And this is where we can start building up the details in the tree and on the trunk. And then I think we'll make it a little bit paler again and we'll add some even slightly whiter areas just on the very edge. There we go. And then we can come in with our reds and yellows and burnt sienna again and we'll start adding a few more leaves but this time they're going to be quite vibrant because this is where the light is going to hit the leaves on this area so we'll keep those nice and colorful really warm and vibrant we can add some white to a little bit too just to make them lighter and catch the highlights where the sun is hitting the leaves I'm still using my medium round brush and I'm just using the tip of the brush again to get those leaf like shapes. Just little dots and dabs of all the different colours. I haven't mixed the paint too much on my brush. Sometimes it's quite nice if you get two colours mixing together on the canvas. And you can just add them wherever you feel looks best. We'll put some more over here. It's quite a loose painting, so it really is fairly simple to do. I really like the way the autumn colours look nice and complement the blues and purples in the distance. So that's really what we're playing with today. And if there are any parts that you don't like, just go over the top with a different colour and just keep building it up. mixing up my yellow again. I've darkened it a little and we'll start adding some highlights on this tree trunk too. Just on that left hand side. If you need to warm up the yellow a little bit we can add a little bit of burnt sienna. You could even add a tiny amount of red which would make it slightly warmer and more brown or orange. also start adding some shadows as well because we've got our highlights on one side so we'll darken up the tree trunks and add a little bit of shadow on the other side. For this we're just using our ultramarine and burnt sienna again. It'll be more blue if you add more ultramarine and slightly browner if you add more burnt sienna. But mixing those two colours together does give you a nice dark. So we'll darken up the shadow on this tree just on the right and then I'll make this tree slightly more brown, so I've added more burnt sienna to it. And we'll add a nice shadow on the right side of this tree too. And 
and you can add a little detail to when you put it in your shadows you can just build it up and start adding use the shadows to add a few lines and details on the trunk Add a little bit of water to it as well if it's too dry. It really just depends on what paint you're using. Every brand is slightly thinner than others, so just add water as you need it. You could add a little bit of medium too if you wanted to, but generally water works absolutely fine. We'll add a few more spots of colour really to bring out those trees. And we can tidy up this area too, so these bushes in the background sit nice and solidly on the ground. We can also start adding some more colour and building up the warm colours and also the greens and things on the ground. Add a little more detail, make it a little brighter where we need to. That's a little bit too dark. Okay, come in with our brown. I've got my burnt sienna in red. And we'll just start adding a little bit of colour and warmth to that ground. And again, if you don't like one section, you can just go over the top with a different colour. The main thing I'm thinking about at this point is I'm going to keep the two corners at the front a little bit darker with dark green because I know that they're going to be in shadow. So we're really just thinking about where the sunlight's going to hit and where it's going to stay in shadow. So we'll add a little bit of white to our yellow and our warmer colours and we can start thinking about the highlights and the warmer areas that the sunlight's going to hit too. Just blending it all together. And you can go over it as many times as you like. Just keep playing around until you get something that you're happy with. This 
stand back and have a look. Make sure you put in those highlights where you want. And then we'll just build them up as we go. And I think what I might do too is add some really pale green highlights just on this area as we're leading to that lighter area in the distance. Let's just add a few of those in too. Now I'm going to come in with my black. This is the first time that I've used black today. We're going to add a little bit of burnt sienna to it, a little bit of ultramarine. So I'm only using just a little bit of black with it. And we can use this very, very dark color to block out the tree trunk right in the foreground. So I've got my medium rain brush again. And we'll just look at, we'll place it about here to sweep it up and all we're doing at this point is blocking it in we're not going to worry about any details we just want to get that tree trunk shape right in the front I've had a little bit of red as well and burnt sienna. It's probably a little bit too red, so we'll add some more black to that. And we'll just bring all of that down. Add a little bit of water too if you need to. It'll make it a slightly easier to block out the shape. It might need one or two coats of paint, but just keep building it up until you've got it nice and dark and blocked out. And we'll carry that dark area down onto the ground as well, into the shadows. We'll just tidy up this area a little. And we can add some branches on the tree in the foreground as well with the same dark colour. Just curving them up and bringing them up, getting thinner as we get to the top part and using just the tip of the brush. If 
if it's easier you can come in with a smaller round brush to get those fine more detailed branches and twigs at the end but I'm just using the very tip of my brush And we'll also start adding a little bit of a silhouette of some leaves and branches around the tree. I'm using the same dark colour, same round brush, just a few little dots and dabs. And we'll put a few at the top on the branches too. And we can put some in the bottom right hand corner as well. right where the shadows are going to be. add just a couple of little trees I think here but we'll make them quite faint a little bit paler a little bit more colorful just at the other side of this tree Just a little white to it for a few highlights on the side. A few highlights at the top.
And we can add a little bit of dappled light, just a tiny amount, on the tree in the foreground, just to break up that trunk a little bit. Maybe add some green at the bottom. Tidy up the edges. And then we can come in with our liner brush and add those fine lines and details in the same dark colour we used for the tree. A few smaller leaves, a few very fine lines and branches to give that detail right at the front. If you don't have a liner brush you could also use a small round brush. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy the longer form full tutorial step by step. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit the like button for me. And here are some other videos that might be helpful to watch next if you'd like to learn more about acrylic painting. See you next time.